Got a new tip for you today. Oh, great. Which one do you open up first, black or gray? Well, you had to get me on one mistake, right? <laughs> on right. this video, at least one mistake. I'm Tom. And I'm Cherie. And we're enjoythejourney.live. Hey guys, look who is back today. It's Jim from Clean Tank. And uh, your video, Jim, on our channel, uh, RV Black Tank Masterclass on our channel is consistently number one or number two on our channel and has gotten uh, hundreds and hundreds of questions and comments. So Tom, which one do you open up first, black or gray? Black for sure. Black, is that what everybody thinks? <laughs> Here's a little tip for you. Open up the gray first. A really quick one on the gray allows you to do a couple of things. Number one, if you have any leaks here, now it's going to leak out or spout a little gray water rather than black. No. No. Number two, the inside of your hose here is always smells a lot. And uh, smells a lot because initially it's dry. And the first liquid thing, which most people think is the black tank that they should open, the first liquid thing that it uh, that touches it, it tends to grab and hold on to. And these sewer hoses have a lot of little creases in them. So they're holding on to a lot of that black tank stuff. And they're uh, that's why they smell all the time. So if you do a really quick gray, kind of pull it out, count to three, one, two, three. That'll help to lubricate things. You can see if there's any leaks. And then you can go ahead and open up that black kind of flush things out that way. And then when the black is empty, we can open up the gray to do that kind of rinse on it. So a quick gray, then the black, and then the rest of the gray. And you know what? It's What's funny is I just was tagged in a post on Instagram by somebody that had, yeah, went black first, had a bad connection, oh. and then, yeah, you have a big issue. So yep. thank you for sharing yep. that tip. Yep. Uh, well, you had to get me on one mistake, right? <laughs> on right. this video, at least one mistake. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of gray first. Yep. Check your fittings and and that thing about sticking to yep. the hose. Yep. Yeah, that's a, that's a great one. Yep. Well, you see, I have a pair of big black gloves here. I like to have the big thick ones just to give me some protection. But I got a new tip for you today. Oh, great. Blue gloves, I wear multiple pairs. Oh, nice. When you're out there in the hot weather, your hands get kind of sticky and sweaty. Multiple pairs will take care of that, no problem at all. So if you get a, a pair of your gloves on there, you get a rip in them or a tear. If you have multiple pairs on it, just peel them off and keep on going. That's a great tip. Yep. And you know, a big question uh, that we're going to make a whole video about just today is a lot of people said, well, that's fine and wonderful that you can use all that water cleaning your tanks when you've got full hookups, but what happens if you're not at a full hookup RV park, or if you're like a lot of us, including me, you're out boondocking and much prefer boondocking, not in a big crowded RV park uh, like this one. So what kinds of tips would you have in those situations, Jim? Absolutely. Uh, so boondocking and tank care is all about planning so let's assume you're going to go stay at a state park or harvest house or someplace for a while where you're not going to have uh, water you're not going to have a lot of water so when you're on your way there uh, you've got to do some planning so that you can kind of be smart about your water usage so um, I probably wouldn't travel with some water in your tanks like I might normally recommend that you do if you're going to an RV park or resort. Try to keep those dry. Uh, when you're setting up, normally I would say, hey, three to five gallons in each of your tanks to kind of prime them. Probably wouldn't recommend that or maybe a, a reduced amount, maybe one or two gallons just so you have a lot of capacity there. So as a boondocker or somebody on uh, limited resources, you really want to plan your usage of those tanks. If you're uh, out there, maybe you're going to go to dinner or lunch or something, use the restroom 
uh, at the restaurant where you're going. If you're going to be going and doing some sightseeing, try to use the restaurant off-site so that you don't have to come back and use uh, the ones in your RV. Um, think about when you're going to be leaving and try to time things so that your tanks are as full as they can be, assuming that you're going to be either maybe going to a truck stop or a rest stop or someplace that has the ability to dump so that you're filling those tanks up toward the end of your uh, stay so that your next uh, destination or a destination along the way you can empty them out. Uh, certainly if you are going to perhaps a park or an RV resort after your boondocking experience that's the time to kind of go a little crazy with your water usage if you have it there and uh, maybe do some extra flushes, maybe just uh, kind of fill that thing all the way up as much as you can, flush it out, and just kind of give it a really good, nice, deep saturation of water when you have that opportunity. So uh, one of, a couple of the other things you can do when you're boondocking, if you've got a protracted or longer stay, is you can use something like the Blue Boy here or the Tote to uh, actually fill up and uh, usually cart off to a dump station or something like that. That really, honestly, can really get you uh, even months of stay in a location that doesn't have full hookups. And you might be doing something like that maybe once a week or at most maybe twice a week, depending on the size. They come in different sizes. Uh, to fill up with water, if you have something like a bladder, uh, then certainly you can fill that up and that gets you water back into your holding tank, uh, your freshwater tank, and then using your pump. Obviously, you're cycling it down through the waste tanks and using, again, something like the Blue Boy uh, would be of help. If you don't have one of these, you know, maybe once a week you might have to hook up your rig uh, to your truck or drive your motor coach over to the dump station and dump it out there. But if you're using smart conservation and thinking about what you're doing with your waste tanks, you should be able to stay for an extended stay in any location. And Jim, uh, actually, we also have a macerator pump so that we've been able to leave uh, the blue tote in the back of the truck yeah. and just pump right into that and then drive, you know, 20, 30 miles away and to a dump station. Yeah. So that's another idea, right? It absolutely is. And if you're fortunate to maybe be boondocking by a dump station, if you have that macerator, you could even get a hose long enough to uh, pump into the dump station. Sometimes they can go... 150 to even 200 feet depending on the model of macerator. From here, from my sight to that thing right there, which I've never seen anything like this before. A gray water only spot. So Jim, we had a comment saying just get a cassette toilet and not mess with all of this. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, cassette toilets are very popular in Europe. And uh, basically there, you're just kind of popping in literally a cassette, doing your business, taking them out. And uh, they are uh, interesting, I think, technology that uh, may find its way into the States uh, a little bit more than it is already. But uh, you may have a tough time uh, convincing the major manufacturers to convert from the plain old holding tanks to the cassette version. And I guess maybe a close uh, to that one would be the composting toilet. Yeah, the, you know, we, we, we talk about, uh, we were talking about in uh, another video about some things you can do uh, if you're boondocking or conserving water or something like that. The composting toilet's definitely one of those options. It's kind of uh, advanced level RVing. It's not for everybody. Uh, but it is a good option and it can help to conserve water if you do a lot of boondocking. It just takes a little bit of a learning curve and just kind of get used to how it works. So Jim, uh, Denise asked, uh, great information. Any special advice for weekend warriors that don't usually fill the tanks in just a few days? Yeah, that's a, another good uh, uh, point uh, there is... Let's say you're going out for the weekend, you're doing what you're doing, it's time to go home on Sunday or maybe on a Monday, and your tanks are maybe a third full or so. Put some water in there to get them up to at least 75% to 100%. Uh, and that way a full tank, when you pull these valves, it's gonna create sort of a, a whirlpool and that's gonna help to keep things clean. It's gonna evacuate those tanks quickly and uh, you're just gonna have a healthier tank. So adding water to get the volume up is key.
So, Jim, uh, you're also a fellow RVer. What do you have and how long have you been RVing? Absolutely. So, my wife and I have been RVing for 18 years now. We have a, a 2023 Airstream Classic, the biggest one that Airstream makes. And uh, uh, we, uh, we have problems with our tanks sometimes, too. So, um, we, uh, we follow our process as well. Uh, but we're, your, we're uh, RVers just like everybody else. We have the same frustrations and things, and really that was one of the main reasons we decided to start our business. Who does Jim call when he has problems with his tanks? <laughs> well, believe it, or, <laughs> believe it or not, now because we're adding so many dealers, I do all the trainings, or most of them, and uh, I get my tanks cleaned uh, almost on a weekly basis by our, our new dealers. So now they're pretty clean. So you have the cleanest tanks on the planet then, right? Uh, that would probably be correct, Thanks. <laughs> yes indeed. Well, Jim, um, thank you so much for coming out here again and answering these questions. And we will link to our other videos with Clean Tank. Uh, and uh, watch for our other videos coming out where I'm going to get a re-cleaning. What grade am I gonna get <laughs> after a year of using regular toilet paper? in our RV, so watch for that video. I guess it's important to say that, uh, you know, you are still adding dealers. Yes. If people are interested in that. Absolutely. All of your contact information will be down below in the description and the pinned comment. Yep. Uh, so they can reach out to you with questions. Absolutely. Um, and keep the questions coming because yep. I'm sure we'll run into you again and we'll get more of these questions answered make sure you hit that subscribe button because we've recorded even more videos with jim yep. about this topic so actually we'll put one of those videos up right over here right now